Yo, yeah, yeah, dude, dude, you gotta hear. I'm up 300% the game. Where? Foot Locker. <laughs> you gotta hear about this Foot Locker stuff, dude. Foot Locker? I haven't even heard that name for a long time. Do people even go to Foot Locker anymore? Dude, I haven't even been to a mall since last year. Are malls even open nowadays? I don't even think sports are happening right now, so who's buying shoes? I haven't even had a need for a good cross trainer ever since I quit my intramural competitive speed knitting league, so... Okay guys, alright, settle down. We gotta talk about the... Gear, 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 gear. So, online sales growth. 173%! Oh, oh, yeah. Good afternoon everybody, this is Trey getting back in touch with you from Japan. Today, we're going to be looking at the Foot Locker stock. For those who are new to Foot Locker, Foot Locker is not just the Foot Locker store. There's also Kids Foot Locker, Lady Foot Locker, Champ Sports, Foot Action, Runner's Point, Sidestep, 602, and they also have websites like EastBay.com, FinalScore.com, EastBayTeamSales.com, and SP24. So they're like taking over a bunch of different companies and they're also in a really good position when it comes to transitioning to net base sales. Our man Jeremy has been investing in Foot Locker for a while now. I was in a while ago. I think I before I even heard about it from him maybe, but I've previously gotten out of it. But I was kind of confused because I'm like, brick and mortar? Really? Is that a thing? You know, we're seeing like huge numbers coming out of big tech companies. We're seeing this huge shift to e-commerce. Although, to be fair, you know, uh, Walmart and Target and these kinds of companies are also making their brick and mortar bases, the jumping off points for a lot of their, you know, order online and pick up in the store type things. Um, you can learn more about those companies in these links up here. So I was really interested to hear like why Foot Locker, why now especially? I was particularly kind of confused because one of their big numbers that they put at the top of their second quarter report was the fact that their same store sales or their comps have gone up by 18.8%. And I'm like, bro, is that even possible? Are you guys just playing with the numbers somehow? So I did a bunch of research like for hours trying to track this down and sure enough, it's true. Turns out that even though the stores were shut down about 30% of the second quarter, there still was a boost in same store sales compared to last year. You can chalk that up to a few different things. Uh, I think there was probably pent up demand from the lockdown. I think there was probably also some extra cash in people's pockets from stimulus and things like that. There's probably also a big decrease in the average person's spend on entertainment because you can't go to the movie theaters, you can't go to concerts and things like that. And I think, and people are like, oh, you know, got some extra money now, so I might as well go buy some new kicks. You know what I mean? So sure enough, I think those numbers are legit. Plus 18.8% growth for the second quarter. And we also saw a 17% gain in overall revenues, taking them up to a little over $2 billion in revenues. And with sales of 2 billion last quarter and their market cap being at 3 billion now, very interesting numbers, very kind of compelling, especially when we're getting used to numbers like P ratio of 9,000. Like in my data dog video we looked at the other day, their P ratio is only like 16 right now. So these kinds of numbers are like, what? Something's weird, something's going on, is this okay? We're getting used to like really bonkers P ratios, but it's kind of like, oh, so that's why it's so intriguing. Let's take a deeper look at this. Some more figures for you from their second quarter report. Non-gap net income of 75 million or 71 cents per share. Adjusted EPS up 7.6% to 71 cents year over year. And the big news that just came out a couple days ago that a lot of people are excited about is that they reinstated their dividend. One of the things that's really interesting about Foot Locker in general, especially compared to a lot, a lot of these like dividend aristocrat type companies, is that the management is really kind of like quick on their feet to be like, oh, nope, we gotta turn off the dividend right now or you know, we can turn it back on 15 cents. For a long period of time, it was 40 cents a share. Right now it's 15 cents and they're being really kind of cautious about it. They freed up a bunch of cash, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute too, but they're also open to being at 15 cents or if things suck in third quarter, they can turn it back off or they can raise it back up again. That's a really interesting factor to consider if you're a dividend oriented investor. Another interesting thing I found in my research was that their current ratio, which basically compares their liabilities to their cash on hand and other cash flows has been improving vastly over the years. I'll put it up on the screen for you here. We have 2018 4.14, which means the amount of liabilities is more than 400% 
the amount of cash and other inflows they have going on currently. Dropped down to 3.3 in 2019. In 2020, it's been about two, with the most recent quarter being 1.67. That's a really encouraging sign to see management with the attitude and the orientation of like, we must really aggressively tackle our debt, especially in retail, especially in this climate. They ended last quarter having paid off $330 million in debt and ending with almost $1.4 billion in cash, which is a vastly improved position compared to how they've been in previous quarters and years. This strong new cash position has allowed them to reinstate the dividend and also to be a little bit more defensive to be a little bit more on guard because we kind of don't know what's on the horizon in third quarter and fourth quarter if you want to learn more about why having cash on hand is really important check out my video up here so while we're seeing this kind of surprising amount of growth despite all the closures you know we're also seeing this huge trend this huge switch to online shopping or direct to consumer shopping and Foot Locker is capitalizing on that hardcore. In the last quarter, they had 173% growth in their direct-to-consumer sales avenue. That's what you wanna see, especially for a brick-and-mortar oriented store. Another interesting point that I found in my research was that they did indeed end up closing 29 stores between February and August, and that's generally a bad thing when you hear about stores being closed. You know, obviously, with the pandemic, stores are gonna be closing. But another kind of side benefit that's kind of helpful is that you can choose the lower margin stores and shut those down. And that also saves you on overhead each month, saves you on expenses each month. Then the remaining stores are just more profitable. And that's kind of, we should expect that in the coming years, especially with a bigger shift to more and more online shopping. Looking forward, some of the caution points I think we really need to be aware of is generally kind of late August going into September, we have the back to school season or BTS. Back to school is generally like really, really big for these kinds of things, you know, buying sweaters, buying uh, jackets, shoes, backpacks, these kinds of items, a lot of them are sold for back to school. Um, we know that many schools are just gonna continue online. So we should generally expect probably a bit of a weaker third quarter. I think second quarter, we saw a big boost in a bunch of these factors, but I think you probably need to be ready for third quarter to be either flat or like slightly down, I really wouldn't be surprised if that ended up happening. Foot Locker is also trading at a price to sales ratio of 0.4, which is basically means you're paying 40 cents to get a dollar of sales whenever you buy a stock, which is very kind of like getting rare nowadays in this really hot market. And generally, I think that makes it appear very undervalued, which, you know, if you're prepared going into third quarter being like not super awesome, most likely, if you're gonna, kind of dig that new dividend coming back. Yeah, I think this could be one of those stocks where it's kind of like, you know, you can get in and, you know, it's gonna be growing little by little over the coming months and years. Taking a look at like the gross margins and the net margin, things like that, I think, you know, despite the pandemic, we're not seeing huge changes in the numbers, which is pretty cool and refreshing. I like the stock and I like it even more now that the dividend's back. I personally, I'm not, you know, I'm not like in love with brick and mortar. I think if you're the kind of investor that isn't terrified of brick and mortar right now, Foot Locker is doing pretty good. Foot Locker is, seems to be growing a little bit and they're quite undervalued. So that makes it really appealing looking. And if you're interested in dividends, then it's even more appealing. So I think if you want to follow Jeremy on that road, I don't have any like huge reservations. Just be aware, just be prepared for not super awesome third quarter, maybe, kind of thing. Um, I'm personally not gonna go run in and throw a bunch of money at it. My personal style recently has been shifting towards like world-changing type stocks. Um, if you wanna learn more about things like Square or Lemonade or Tesla, I got videos on all those up here. Maybe even Datadogs, kind of overpriced. P8000, like I mentioned earlier. But Foot Locker, solid stock. I can't hate on you if you're gonna pick up some. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section after you hit that like button. And let me know a little bit about your portfolio. Are you thinking about Foot Locker as like a diversification play? Are you liking it just because the dividend's coming back? What draws you towards it or what pushes you away from it? I wanna hear a little bit more about what people are thinking about Foot Locker. Looking forward very much to hearing your comments. Thank you guys for your time. I love you guys, have a great day.